So a few weeks ago I was browsing the Epic Games Store when I saw an advertisement for a game called Oxenfree pop up in the bottom right of my screen saying that it was free. And I mean, who could refuse free? I see that it was developed by an indie game studio that I've never heard of. So I go into this with pretty low expectations, much to my surprise it was one of the best games I've played in years. So here I am just having finished a game when I get an idea, I should review it. Little did I know the game was actually released over 3 years ago. Conveniently enough I was already in the process of creating a new series called Indie Interpolation and this is the first episode so enjoy. When I started the game I figured I'd be playing your typical point and click adventure game. After playing it though I do feel like it was more akin to Life is Strange than Terraria as far as mechanics go where your choices do actually affect the outcome of the storyline and the similarities between Life is Strange and Oxenfree didn't end there. Time travel is a trope that both games have in common however Oxenfree has a noticeably darker tone in all aspects such as the storyline and the soundtrack but we'll get into that later. The game supports controller or mouse and keyboard although I would say that is best played on controller. All the animations feel smooth, nothing feels forced or jagged, and overall it is really solid. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. And don't worry, I'll explain that rating system at the end. Now, the art design for the game is so unique to the point where I can't really compare it to anything else that I've seen before. It's in that weird spot where it looks so familiar but I can't put a finger on it. The art direction for this game does a really good job at portraying the tone of the game, such as setting the background and the rest of Edwards Island to more dark colors that correspond with the game's overall atmosphere, while setting our protagonist and the rest of the cast to more brighter colors to correspond with each of their respective personalities, and it's truly astonishing how well these two aspects blend together. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. before when I was talking about the art design and I said I couldn't really compare it with anything, the soundtrack of this game is like if you combine Gravity Falls with Stranger Things and multiplied it by a factor of a number that doesn't yet exist. It fits in so well with every other aspect of the game, it really makes you feel like you're inside of the game on a scary time loop. I can't say enough good things about this soundtrack. I can pretty much sum it up by the fact that after I beat the game I went on YouTube and listened to the soundtrack and as one commenter put it, anxiety in the rawest form. And I feel like that's the most spot on representation of the Oxen Free soundtrack. Honestly, this is probably one of the best video game soundtracks I've ever heard. Maybe in between Firewatch and Quantum Break, but this one seriously blew me out of the water. It's one of those soundtracks that you don't notice are there until you finish the game and you look up and you're like, wow, there were this many songs played throughout the entire game. Usually when listening to a game soundtrack, it'll give you vibes or remind you of the atmosphere and tone of that game, but this was just on a whole different level. 10 out of 10. If you thought this game couldn't get any better then you were wrong. The story of this game as far as surprises go is a 10 out of 10. An emotion that I have yet to find the name of is that feeling you get like when Thanos snapped everyone away in Avengers Infinity War. That kind of emptiness feeling where like a big bombshell just dropped on you and you just don't know what to do. A similar effect is littered all throughout games like Orwell, Life is Strange, and Oxenfree. I won't get into any specifics because this is a game that you, yes you, have to experience yourself. In fact, right now Oxenfree is actually 75% off on the Humble Bundle store, I'll have a link to that in the description. What I will say however is that the game drops you in the middle of a world and sets up every subplot perfectly, all the characters and their interactions feel natural, and there's a certain degree of realism involved in the way that everyone reacts to the island and all the supernatural events literally happening right in front of their faces and to each and every one of their friends. To give you an example, just look at this scene near the beginning of the game. And sometimes play truth or slap. Yeah, let's play that. We can inaugurate Jonas. Isn't it a uh, truth or dare? This is better than truth or dare because nobody ends up licking somebody's butthole. You get asked a question. You have to tell the truth, but if somebody can prove that you lied, the accuser gets to slap you. It's a good, uh, getting to know somebody game. Yeah, fun. An excuse to hit run. Hey, 
I'm the truthiest truth who ever All truthed, right, let's uh, just get on with it. Okay. So, first, we're going to I'll start. Ren. Uh-huh. Come on, fess up. You want to go out with Nona, right? Clarissa. We wait, wait. Oh man, you're good at this. Well, if being good means being kind of mean about it. Look, it's tough to gauge. Uh, something mm-hmm. like... Enough stalling. I know you want to sample the goods, now no, just say so. I, I mean, I, I, I like her as a friend, right? That's... I just like her as a friend. That's... that's all. Oh, liar? Liar! He's lying! He totally likes her! What? Alex, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> I... He, you told me you liked her. Why did you even try to cover... You knew I knew. I'm standing right here. Because I asked you to be cool about it, and now you're being, like, whatever the complete opposite of cool is. Hot! But in a bad way. All right, Alex, you get first blood. Slap him like he stole something. I can't believe this is happening. Ha <laughs> ha! And it's not even my birthday. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I didn't think you had it in you. See what I mean? That was a conversation that I can totally imagine having with my friends. Nothing feels forced or out of touch with this generation. One of the few flaws I realized while playing Life is Strange, despite the fact that being developed in 2013 and released in 2015, some of the dialogue and character interactions felt like they were being written for a 2001 Disney original. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10, the only reason being some of the subplots never got tied up. At the end of the game, when Alex is wrapping up everything, some of the events felt glossed over, making me wish for a sequel. Conclusion, Oxen Free as a whole is a masterpiece in which I hold dear to my heart. It took me through basically every emotion in the book. Fear levels all time high, but it wasn't like jump scare fear levels. There was a degree of subtlety that was there and I'm all for it. Everywhere from the bunker to the tower, you just got chills when the, I won't even name them, but these people show up and it is, yeah, it is truly a crazy experience that I hopefully can experience a sequel for. With a lovable cast, eccentric soundtrack, and engaging storyline, they didn't feel too short or too long, which brings me to my final rating of 8.75. Definitely recommend this game. It's on Epic. It's on Steam for $20. It was free. And yeah, I'll have links to everything in the description. Until next time, peace.